Now let's take you now to Zimbabwe, where Zano PF spokesperson uh, Simon Kaya Moyo has died yesterday, Sunday 14th of November, at the age of 76. Now Moyo joined the Zimbabwe African People's Union in 1968. Kaya Moyo was one of the young people at the time who left the country to join the struggle in neighboring Zambia. Now Simon Kaya Moyo received military training in Russia and Cuba. Quite communist, I have to say. He also was one of the few people that attended the Malt Geneva uh, and uh, Lancaster conferences that resulted in the uh, Lancaster House Agreement together with the uh, Latin Liberation hero Joshua Nkomo. Now, joining us now from Zimbabwe is our correspondent Lala Mgwenya. Lala, a morning to you out there in Harare. Lala, uh, tell us all about the death of this uh, Zimbabwean hero. Good morning, Olisa and Oluchi. Morning. Okay, so uh, this uh, Simon Kayamoyo is one one of the respected uh, liberation war veterans of our time, and he was uh, very instrumental, you know, in the in the liberation of Zimbabwe. Uh, he joined the struggle in 1968 when he left Zimbabwe for, for Zambia, because uh, at that time, that's where most of the of the liberation war veterans they were going to get trained or they'll be going to universities, or then they'll be transferred to countries like Russia and Cuba from Zambia to go and get trained. So he played a very significant role in uh, in one of the two um, uh, parties that that African-led parties at the time. There was the Zipra, which was mostly from the the northern part of the country. Then there was the Zapu, which was on, from the southern part of the country uh, in Matepeleland, that which was led by Joshua Mgabu Gongomo. And this is the party that Simon Kaya belonged to. And he worked with Joshua Mgabu Gongomo. Even when they went to sign the Lancaster agreement which actually uh, ordered a ceasefire uh, between the, uh, the Rhodesian forces at the time and the the, 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 the the fighters, the liberation war fighters. Actually, it is an agreement that led into the independence of Zimbabwe and it was signed in December 1979. So you can see that this is a man who lived most of his life and walked most of his life fighting for the liberation of the country and he has served the government in different posts over the years. Now, Lala, there's been a debate on whether he was a hero, especially when he made a statement in his native language that was loosely translated to "Zano PF will rule until donkeys have horns." Can you tell us more about that controversy? Okay, so this goes down to to the nature, what you know, some may say, the nature of Zanu PF or the nature of any uh, political party. There is no political party that wants to lose its power. There is no political party that wants you know to be to be voted out or to be removed from power. So these are statements that politicians are are keen on making and saying, you know, to threaten uh, the opposition party. And that statement was actually said during one of the heated. Um, he said time when MDC was rising and he was assuring them that, you know what, you may be making so much noise, but ZANU-PF is not going anyway. We, they, uh, ZANU-PF is here to, to rule until donkeys come home. <laughs> All right, so away from uh, donkeys and, you know, horns out there in Zimbabwe. Lala, uh, this is a man clearly who was part of the liberation struggle alongside uh, uh, former president uh, and late leader of the country him, uh, himself in Mugabe. What do you think Zambians, uh, Zimbabweans are feeling this morning after he passed away? Because it's more of the liberation struggle heroes who are passing on after uh, the former president. Uh, you know, uh, interestingly, Simon Kaya, though in his later years, in his later political years, he was a bit controversial uh, because one time he was told, he was said to be aligned to the Mugabe faction in Zanu PF. Then later on, they were saying no, he's aligned to the current president uh, um, Nangagwa. But then Nangagwa also. Uh, resigned him in 2018. He was the Minister of Information and Broadcasting Services at the time, after the events of 2017 that saw the ouster of Robert Mugabe. Uh, but he remained a key role in, uh, in ZANU-PF Central Committee, the Politburo. He remained a, a key person because he was the spokesperson until a few months ago when 
he wasn't feeling well when he started really his health started de deteriorating and uh, they to put Mike Bima as the acting spokes spokesperson. So we may clearly say he he died still the spokesperson of ZANU PF. However, back to your question, Kaya Moyo seems to have uh, attracted quite. Um, you know, different uh, views, mixed feelings. There are some who then talk about him uh, referring to his last years, the, the last four years, you know, and how he, he had become making rec uh, reckless statements. But there's a group that still respects him, especially the group from the region where he comes from, uh, that still respects him. And he was one of the few people from the region where he comes from that were that are still alive, that were still alive. Sorry, uh, from the liberation uh, war, uh, he was one of the few heroes. Sorry, that were still alive from the Matipelelen side. So there's there's still so much respect from Matipelelen and even countrywide. Right now, Lala, I mean, it, there's still a lot of controversy around Kaya Moyo as we speak. I mean, some have come out to say that he may have started as a hero, but he spent the last 41 years as an oppressor. But that's from people who do not believe in his vision. But can you tell us what you know about plans for his burial um, as he has been celebrated as a national hero in the country? And any comments from Mangagwa following his death too? Okay, so the, the, the president hasn't uh, issued a statement, but obviously I'm sure any time now we are going to have a statement from the president and everybody is waiting to see if he will be declared a, a national hero. But I'm going to put my money on that he's going to be declared a national hero. <laughs> Right. All right. Thank that. you so much. Thank you so much, Lala. Thank you for giving us your update. Of course, we will be following this story and we will follow up to the burial plans and um, the aftermath of it. But thank you so much for coming on the program. All right, moving on from Zimbabwe to Zambia now, where police in Lusaka has apprehended and detained former defense minister in the Patriotic Front government, Davis Chama, and Bran Dusisani Nyoni for an alleged offense of attempted murder contrary to section of the laws of Zambia. Now, police spokesperson Rea Hamonga uh, said the two persons on the 6th of June 2015 in the Sihili of uh, Molubezi district of Republic of Zambia jointly and uh, whilst acting together with others unknown did attempt uh, to unlawfully uh, cause the death of uh, one uh, Mushakwa Mushwaka age uh, 47 of uh, Shekeke. Uh, two of them are currently in police custody. Now uh, we're going to follow that story to see how it goes but that's the one there ex-Zambia minister arrested for attempted murder in the country. More top stories coming your way right here on Breakfast Central.